How does modular arithmetic work? In modular arithmetic, numbers wrap around when they reach a fixed quantity. This is also called the modulus thus the name modular arithmetic with the standard way of writing the form as mod 12 or mod 2. In this case, if the two numbers be, also called the base, and C, also called the remainder, are subtracted, BC, and their difference is a number integrally divisible by M. Or, BC, slash M, then B, and C are said to be congruent modulo M. Mathematically, B is congruent to C, modulo M, is written as follows, with the symbol for congruence. Smiley face, B equals C, mod M, but if BC is not integrally divisible by M, then it is said, B is not congruent to C, modulo M, or B dash equals C, mod M, more formally. Modular arithmetic includes any non-trivial homomorphic image of the ring of integers. We can interpret this interesting definition using a clock. The modulus would be the number 12 on the clock, arithmetic modulo 12. With an associated ring labeled C12 and the allowable numbers being 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Another example is arithmetic modulo 2, with an associated ring of C2, or allowable numbers of 1 and 2. What is a statistic and a sample statistic? A statistic is the measure of the items in a random sample. A sample statistic is meant to give information about a specific population feature, or parameter. For example, if a sample mean is gathered for a set of data, that would provide information about the overall population mean. What is a placeholder? A placeholder is a number that, as the name implies, holds a place. Initially, various cultures used a placeholder often a dot or a space to show an empty spot or place not used in a numeral, or other way of counting. This was in place of what we now call a zero, zero. A symbol that is not only a placeholder but also an essential number in our numeration system. For more about the evolution of the symbol 00, zero see History of Mathematics. What do cholesterol numbers mean? Cholesterol numbers indicate the amount of cholesterol in the bloodstream, cholesterol is a waxy fat-like substance manufactured in the liver and found in all tissues. For humans, a total cholesterol number above 200 means there is an increase in the risk of heart disease. Between 200 and 239 is considered borderline high cholesterol. For anything below 200, there is less of a risk for heart disease. 
but total cholesterol is not the only number to know. There is also low density lipoprotein, LDL, or bad cholesterol. LDL is the main source of the buildup and blockage in the arteries. Risk levels are above 130, measured in milligrams per deciliter. There is also high-density lipoprotein, HDL, the good cholesterol that helps keep the plaque from building up. Risk levels are below 40, measured in milligrams per deciliter. When there is too much cholesterol in the blood, it can build up on the walls of the arteries. Over time, the buildup, often called plaque, causes hardening of the arteries. Or a narrowing of the arteries that restricts or stops blood flow to the heart. What type of number system is used by modern computers? Modern computers use the binary system, a system that represents information using sequences of zeros and ones. It is based on powers of 2, unlike our decimal system based on powers of 10. This is because in the binary system, another number place is added every time another power of 2 is reached. For example, 2, 4, 8, and so on, in the decimal system. Another place is added every time a power of 10 is reached, for example, 10, 100, 1000, and so on. Computers use the simple number system primarily because binary information is easy to store. A computer's CPU, central processing unit, and memory are made up of millions of switches that are either off or on the symbols 0 and 1 represent those switches respectively and are used in the calculations and programs. The two numbers are simple to work with mathematically within the computer. When a person enters a calculation in decimal form, the computer converts it to binary. Solves it, and then translates that answer back to decimal form. What were some early units used for calculating length? The earliest length measurements reach back into ancient time, and it is a convoluted history. Some of the earliest measurements of length are the cubit, digit, inch, yard, mile, furlong, and pace. One of the earliest recorded length units is the cubit. It was invented by the Egyptians around 3000 BCE and was represented by the length of a man's arm from his elbow to his extended fingertips. Of course, not every person has the same body proportions, so a cubit could be off by a few inches. This was something the more precision-oriented Egyptians fixed by developing a standard royal cubit. This was maintained on a black granite rod accessible to all. Enabling the citizenry to make their own measuring rods fit the royal standard. The Egyptian cubit was not the only one. By 1700 BCE the Babylonians had changed the measurement of a cubit, making it slightly longer. In our measurement standards today, the Egyptian cubit would be equal to 524 mm, 20.63 inches. And the Babylonian cubit, cubit 2, 
would be equal to 530 millimeters, 20.87 inches. The metric unit millimeters is used here, as it is an easier way to see the difference between these two qubits. As the name implies, a digit was measured by the width of a person's middle finger and was considered the smallest basic unit of length. The Egyptians divided the digit into other units. For example, 28 digits equaled a cubit, 4 digits equaled a palm, and 5 digits equaled a hand. They further divided 3 palms, or 12 digits, into a small span, 14 digits. Or a half cubit, into a large span, and 24 digits into a small cubit. To get smaller measurements than a digit, the Egyptians used fractions. Over time, the measurement of an inch was all over the measurement map. For example, one inch was once defined as the distance from the tip to the first joint on a man's finger. The ancient civilization of the Harappan in the Punjab used the Indus inch. Based on ruler markings found at excavation sites, it measured, in modern terms, about 1.32 inches, 3.35 centimeters, see below for more about the Harappan. The inch was defined as 1 a 36th of King Henry I of England's arm in the 11th century. And by the 14th century, King Edward II of England ruled that one inch equaled three grains of barley corn placed end to end lengthwise. See box on P46 for more about both kings. Longer measurements were often measured by such units as yards, furlongs, and miles in Europe. At first, the yard was the length of a man's belt, also called a girdle. The yard became more standard for a while. When it was determined to be the distance from King Henry I's nose to the thumb of his outstretched arm. The term mile is derived from the Roman mill passus, or 1000 double steps, also called paces. The mile was determined by measuring 1000 double steps. With each double step by a Roman soldier measuring 5 feet. Thus, 1,000 double steps equaled a mile, or 5,000 feet, 1,524 meters. The current measurement of feet in a mile came in 1595, when, during the reign of England's Queen Elizabeth I, it was agreed that 5,280 feet, 1,609 meters, would equal one mile. This was mainly chosen because of the popularity of the furlong. Eight furlongs equaled 5,280 feet. Finally, the pace was once attached to the Roman mile, see above. Today, a pace is a general measurement. Defined as the length of one average step by an adult human, or about 2.5 to 3 feet, 0.76 to 0.19 meters. What are ordinal and cardinal numbers? In common, arithmetic terms, cardinal numbers are those that express amounts. They are also used in simple counting or to answer the question of quantity, how many. They can be nouns, try counting to 10, as pronouns, 10 were discovered, or adjectives, 10 cats. 
specifically, the term is from the Latin carden, meaning stem or hinge. Referring to the most important or principal numbers, with others depending, hinging, on those numbers. We are most familiar with the cardinal numbers as our counting numbers. Or the Hindu Arabic numeration system 1, 2, 3, and so on. Ordinal numbers are much different. In common, arithmetic terms, ordinal numbers are adjectives that describe the numerical position of an object, such as first, second, third, and so on. They are used to show the order of succession for objects, second chair, names, second month, or periods of time, second century. Note that cardinal and ordinal numbers are easily divided. For example, in the Hindu Arabic numeration system, the cardinal numbers may be read as ordinals, such as May 10th being read as May 10th. Such differences are even harder to distinguish when it comes to Roman numerals. Most of the time, these numerals are considered cardinal numbers, I, 2, 3, etc. But they can also be ordinal numbers in certain contexts, such as Henry VIII, Henry VIII. Roman numerals can even contain ordinal suffixes, such as the IXTH dynasty. What are the rules for adding and subtracting fractions? When adding fractions, the denominators need to be the same. But you can't add the denominators to get the answer. Simply put, if the denominators are already the same, the fractions are simple to add, such as one third plus one third equals one plus one slash three equals two thirds. If the denominators are not the same, find the common denominator by multiplication. For example, one half plus one third equals three sixths plus two sixths equals three plus two slash six equals five sixths. When subtracting fractions, the denominators again need to be the same, and again you can't add, or subtract, the denominators to get the answer. If the denominators are the same, subtract the fractions, such as 2 thirds 1 third equals 2 1, slash 3 equals 1 third. If the denominators are not the same, Find the common denominator by multiplication, such as one half one third equals three sixths two sixths equals three two slash six equals one sixth. Why are functions important to analytic geometry? The intricacies of functions are important mainly because the function and the graph of all the points in a function is one of the basic foundations of analytic geometry. This becomes even more evident when trying to solve complex equations or equations with more than one variable. For example, when determining the solution to an equation, such as 3x plus 4y equals 8. The two resulting numbers called a set of ordered pairs of numbers is called a relation. In turn, a function then becomes a relation in which each first element 
such as x, is matched exactly with a second element, such as y. In other words, a function can take on a definite value, or values. When certain values are assigned to other quantities or independent variables of the function. For more information about functions, see Foundations of Mathematics and Algebra. What is the major difference between a population and a sample? Population is examined to identify its certain characteristics. A sample is taken in order to make inferences about the characteristics of the population from which the sample was drawn. What is a Diophantin equation? The first mention of Diophantine equations was by Greek, Hellenic, mathematician Diophantus, c. 210 c. 290 c. E. in his treatise Arithmetica. He solved equations with several variables for integral solutions what we call Diophantine equations today. For more about Diophantus in history, See History of Mathematics. These are represented by one equation with at least two variables. Such as x and y, and whose solutions have to be whole numbers, or integers. These equations either have no solutions, or an infinite or finite number of solutions. Diophantin analysis is the mathematical term for how to determine integer solutions for such algebraic equations. What are some familiar Arabic terms used in mathematics? There are numerous Arabic terms we use today in our studies of mathematics. One of the most familiar is the term algebra, which came from the title of the book. Algebra W. Al Mukabala by Persian mathematician Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi, 783 c. 850, also seen as Al Khwarizmi and Al Khwarizmi. He was the scholar who described the rules needed to do mathematical calculations in the Hindu-Arabic numeration system. The book, whose title is roughly translated as Transposition and Reduction, explains all about the basics of algebra. For more information, see Algebra. Another Arabic derivation is Algorithm which stems from the Latinized version of Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi's own name. Over time, his name evolved from al-Khwarizmi to al-Chorizmi, then algorithmi, algorithmus. Algorithm, and finally algorithm. What are the definitions of zero and non-zero? Those who use the Hindu-Arabic numeration system are all familiar with the concept of zero, zero, and its importance. The symbol zero represents a valuable placeholder. 
it is also the additive identity element of an algebraic system, when a number and its additive inverse add up to zero. And, finally, it is the starting point in measurements. The zero symbol is also called a cipher, no relation to sending secret messages. Or the symbol for the absence of quantity, although be aware that cipher can also mean any Hindu Arabic numeral. In other words, zero is not, nothing, or, from the Old English. Na wit, meaning not na and thing wit. Mathematicians also use the word non-zero to represent a quantity that does not equal zero. A real non-zero number must either be positive or negative. A complex non-zero number can be the real or imaginary part of the equation. For more information about complex numbers, see above. What is the longest span of time measured on the geologic time scale? The longest span of time measured on the geologic time scale is the Precambrian era. Also called the Precambrian Eon. It represents the time between 4.55 billion years to about 544 million years ago. Or about seven-eighths of the Earth's history. This time period includes the beginning of the Earth's formation, its cool-down, its crust's formation. And, within the last billion years of the time period, the evolution of the first single tselid to multi tselid organisms. The demarcation of 544 million years ago represents a burst in the evolution of multi tselid organisms, including the first plant and animal species. How is unit price used to determine total price? The unit price is simply the cost for each item, or unit. The term is often used to compare the cost of the same quantity of items that come in different sizes. Or it is used to determine total costs for services. For example, if a person was having a birthday party at a local restaurant for 100 guests, and each meal unit costs $7.50, the total cost of the celebration would be $7.50 x 100 equals $750. Add a tip to the total. See above, and it's easy to see why most people celebrate at home or only invite a few friends. What is a lunar-based calendar? A lunar calendar is a calendar based on the orbit of our moon. The new moon, when you can't see the moon because it is aligned with the sun, is usually the starting point of a lunar calendar. From there, the various phases seen from Earth include crescent, first quarter, and gibbous, these phases after a new moon are also labeled waxing, such as waxing crescent. When the entire face is seen, it is called a full moon, from there. The phases are seen in reverse, 
and are labeled waning, such as waning crescent. Overall, the entire moon cycle takes about 29.530589 days. This cycle was used by many early cultures as a natural calendar. What were the problems with the Egyptian number system? The Egyptian number system had several problems. The most obvious being that it was not written with certain arithmetic calculations in mind. Similar to Roman numerals, Egyptian numbers could be used for addition and subtraction. But not for simple multiplication and division. All was not lost, however. As the Egyptians devised a way to do multiplication and division that involved addition. Multiplying and dividing by 10 was easy with hieroglyphics just replace. Each symbol in the given number by the sign for the next higher order. To multiply and divide by any other factor. Egyptians devised the tabulations based on the two times tables, or a sequence of duplications. What is gambling? Gambling is the act of playing a game for stakes it is thought of as the art of taking chances. It is also often called betting. A bet is the amount of money. Or other object of value, that is risked in a wager. Most people gamble with the hope of winning a certain stake, usually a cash payment. But in order to get such a payoff, the gambler must risk money or valuables. Betting these items on the outcome of a game, contest, or other event. All of this depends on the outcome of activities that are partially or wholly dependent upon chance. What is the most famous Chinese mathematics book? The Zhuang Suanchu, or Nine Chapters on the Mathematical Art, is the most famous mathematical book to come out of ancient China. This book dominated mathematical development for more than 1,500 years. With contributions by numerous Chinese scholars such as Su Yu, C160 C227, though his contributions were lost. It contains 246 problems. Meant to provide methods to solve everyday questions concerning engineering, trade, taxation, and surveying. What was Gaspard Monge's connection to geometry? French mathematician, physicist, and public official Gaspard Monge. Also known as Comte de Pelles, 1746 to 1818, was the first to lay down ideas about modern descriptive geometry. A field that is essential to mechanical and architectural drawing. He is also called the founder of differential geometry. As one of the founders of the Akal Polytechnique. He served as professor of descriptive geometry, 
and around 1,800 published the first textbook. On the subject based on his lectures, aptly called Geometry Descriptive. Today, the system once called Geometry Descriptive is now known as Orthographic Projection. A graphical method used in modern mechanical drawing. Who is sometimes called the first programmer? Any of the first programmers in this case, of a calculating machine was Ada Augusta Byron. 1815-1852, also known as Ada King, Countess of Lovelace. The daughter of Lord George Gordon Noel Byron, 1788-1824, the famous English poet. Inventor and mathematician Charles Babbage met Ada Byron around 1833. While still working on his difference engine. Her interest was reportedly more in his mathematical genius, not his machines. Besides her admiration for him, Ada Byron also put Babbage's name on the computing map. Writing up most of the information about his work, which was something Babbage supposedly could not do as well. For example, she translated an 1842 account of his analytical engine. Written by French-born Italian engineer and mathematician Luigi Federico Minabrea 1809-1896, from French into English. Babbage was so impressed that he suggested she add her own notes and interpretations of the machine. With his encouragement, she added copious notes, describing how the analytical engine could be programmed. And wrote what many consider to be the first ever computer program. Her account was published in 1843. She was also responsible for the term do loop in computer language. A part of a program she called a snake biting its tail. And for developing the mnemonic technique that eventually helped simplify assembler commands. Ada Byron's life deteriorated after writing her notes because of family difficulties, gambling debts. Though not her own, the lack of a scientific project to work on. And probably the fact that none of her friends were as deeply and intuitively involved in mathematics or the sciences as she was. Babbage was no help, either, having his own difficulties including his ongoing attempts to obtain governmental funding for his analytical engine. In 1852, at only 37 years of age, Ada Byron died of cancer, but she was not forgotten. She was remembered and honored in 1980 when the Ada programming language was named after her. What is sea level? Sea level is the height of the ocean's surface at a certain spot and depends on changing conditions. It is also the basis for most Earth surface measurements. Because sea levels are used as a reference point in determining land elevations and ocean depths. Scientists have averaged out the highest and lowest altitudes and depths from sea level locations. The highest is Mount Everest, Nepal, Tibet, which measures 29,022 feet, 7 inches, 8,846 meters, above sea level. 
The lowest on land is the Dead Sea, Israel Jordan, which measures 1,299 feet, 396 meters, below sea level. The greatest depth below sea level is the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. A deep chasm measuring 36,201 feet, 11,033 meters, below sea level. How does a sundial work? The sundial tracks the apparent movement of the sun across the sky. It does this by casting a shadow on the surface of a usually circular dial marked by hour and minute lines. The gnomon or the shadow casting. Angular object on the dial becomes the axis about which the sun appears to rotate. To work correctly, it must point to the North Celestial Pole, near the star Polaris. Also called the North Star, thus, the gnomon's angle is determined by the latitude of the user. For example, New York City is located at about 40.5 degrees north latitude. So a gnomon on a sundial in that city would be at a 40.5 degree angle on a sundial. The sharper the shadow line, the greater the accuracy, in addition. Larger sundials are more accurate, because the hour line can be divided into smaller units of time. But the sundial can't be too large. Eventually, diffraction of the sunlight around the gnomon causes the shadow to soften. Making the time more difficult to read. How do you find the roots of a polynomial? Finding the root, also called a zero, of a polynomial is one way to solve for the equation. In other words, the root of an equation is simply a number, or numbers, that solves the equation. For example, for second degree polynomials we can find the roots by completing the square. Picking apart an equation is the best way to see this, 1 3 x 2 4 x plus 1 equals 0 2. 1 3rd, 3 x 2 4 x plus 1, equals. 1 3rd, 0, making the coefficient of the x2 term into a 1, 3. x2, 4 thirds, x plus 1 third equals 0 4. x2, 4 thirds, x. plus 1 third equals 0, group the x and x2 terms together, 5. x2, 4 thirds, x plus, minus 2 thirds, 2, minus 2 thirds, 2 plus 1 third equals 0, determine the coefficient of the x term. Divide it by 2 and then square, add and subtract that term, 6. x 2 thirds, 2 4 ninths plus 1 third equals 0, x 2 thirds, 2 1 ninth equals 0, add together the 4 ninths plus 1 third by converting the denominator to 9, in which 1 third becomes 3 ninths x 2 thirds, 2 equals 1 ninth, move the 1 ninth to the other side of the equation by subtracting it from both sides. 9 x 2 thirds equals 1 third or x 2 thirds equals minus 1 third that means that x equals 1 or x equals 1 third are the two roots that make the equation true. Just substitute either number into the initial equation to see that they are both true.
What is the Dewey Decimal System? The Dewey Decimal System of Classification is a numerical method libraries. Used to classify nonfiction publications into groups based on subject. It was invented by American librarian Melville Lewis Kossuth Dewey. 1851-1931, as a system for small libraries. The subject of a book is classified by a three-digit numeral that represents ten classes of subjects, 000-999. In order, these are generalities, philosophy and psychology, religion, social science, language, natural science and mathematics, technology, applied sciences, arts, literature, and geography and history. For example, the handy math answer book would be found in the Dewey Decimal System under the 500s for Natural Science and Mathematics. A Dewey Decimal Classification number is followed by the Cutter number, or Cutter. This method was invented by Charles M. I. Cutter, 1837-1903, and is an alphanumeric way to represent words or names by using one or more letters followed by one or more Arabic numerals used decimally. Both systems the Dewey Decimal System and Cutter are together called the call numbers. A way of locating every book in a library. How does one convert latitude and longitude to degrees from readings containing degrees? Minutes, and seconds? It takes simple mathematics to convert the degrees, minutes, and seconds of latitudes and longitudes into degrees only. It helps to know that there are 60 seconds in one minute, and 60 minutes in one degree. Therefore, to translate 65 degrees 45 minutes 36 also written as 65 hours 45 minutes and 36 seconds, south latitude into degrees you would do the following calculation, minus 65 degrees, south makes the number negative plus 45 minutes x, 1 degree slash 60, plus 36 seconds x, 1 slash 60, x, 1 degree slash 60, equals minus 65.76 degrees latitude. How are matrices used? Matrices are used in a multitude of fields, from mathematics and science to certain humanities fields. For example, they are used in physics to determine the equilibrium of rigid bodies. In graph theory, fractals and solutions of systems of linear equations in mathematics. And in forest management, computer graphics, cryptology even electrical networks what are arithmetic series and sequences An arithmetic series also called arithmetic progression is one of the simpler types of series in mathematics. In such a series, 
each new term is the previous number plus a given number, it is usually seen in the form of A plus. A and D, plus, A plus 2D, plus, A plus 3D, plus, A plus, and 1, D. An example of an arithmetic series would be 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 14 plus. And so on, in which D is equal to 4. The initial term is the first one in the series. The difference between each term, D, or 4 in this case, is called the common difference. An arithmetic sequence is usually in the form of A, A and D, A plus 2D, A plus 3D, and so on. In which A is the first term and D is the constant difference between the two successive terms throughout. An example of an arithmetic sequence is, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. In which the difference is always a constant of 3. The notation for arithmetic sequences is, n plus 1 equals n plus d. What is a base in algebra? The base is used in algebra in connection with powers. In fact, it is called the base of a power or the number that is used as a factor a given. Number of times. In the example 34, 3 is the base. The base can either be the number used with an exponent to create a power, such as the 3 in 34, or a number written as a subscript. Such as with a logarithm, for example, log x, in which it is the base number. See below for more information about logarithms, for more information about bases, see Math Basics. What is Sangaku? Sangaku literally, mathematical tablet and often seen as San. Gaku is the name for a form of traditional Japanese temple geometry. From 1639 until 1854, Japan was isolated from the West. Because of this, Japan developed a kind of native mathematics that was used by samurai, merchants, and farmers. They would solve geometry problems, marking their work on delicately inscribed, colored wooden tablets that hung under the roofs of shrines and temples. In general, Sangaku problems dealt with Euclidean geometry. But they were much different from Western geometric studies. Although the majority of the Sangaku are simple to solve by Western standards, others require the use of calculus and other complex methods. Were the Greeks involved in geometry? The Greeks were known to have extensive knowledge of geometry, producing many great geometers. With this and other contributions in mathematics, the Greeks profoundly changed the approach and character of the entire mathematical field. It is thought that Thales of Miletus, c625 c550 BCE, Ionian, first introduced geometry to the Greeks. As a merchant traveler, he was exposed to the Babylonian concept of measurement. 
from which practices sprang geometry. Thales used his geometric knowledge to solve problems such as the height of the pyramids and the distance of ships from the shoreline. Greek geometer Hippocrates of Chios, 470-410 BCE, was one of the first to present an axiomatic approach to geometry. As well as the first to work on the elements almost a century before Euclid, see below. Hippocrates may have worked on geometry and such problems as squaring the circle. But he lacked common sense and was duped by many people. Zeno of Elia, C490 C425 BCE Raised questions about lines, points, and numbers all part of geometry with his many paradoxes. For more information about Zeno and his paradoxes, see Foundations of Mathematics. Another important figure is Eudacus of Nidus, 408-355 BCE, who worked on geometric proportions and theories for determining areas and volumes. Others followed these geometers, including Archimedes, c. 287 to 212 BCE, Hellenic, who worked on mechanics and took the first steps toward integral calculus. Apollonius of Perga, 262 to 190 BCE, or the great geometer, first named and presented theories on conic sections in his book Conics. And he introduced the terms parabola, ellipse, and hyperbola. There was also Pappus of Alexandria, 290 to 350, who presented the basis for modern projective geometry, the geometry that deals with incidences, or whether elements such as lines, planes, and points coincide or not. What are the number of possible positions for a Rubik's Cube? Rubik's Cube was invented in the 1970s by the Hungarian architect, inventor, and mathematician Erno Rubik. 1944, who also invented a number of other puzzles, including Rubik's Clock. The cube measures 3 by 3 by 3, with a total of 26 subcubes on the outside. All the subcubes are hinged, making them easy to turn. By a quarter turn in either direction, in any of the planes on the cube. Initially, each of the six sides are painted a certain color. The object is to move the cube planes in a random way, then return the cube so that each side has a single color again. What are market indexes? A market index is a statistical measure of the changes in a portfolio of stocks. All of which represent a portion of the overall stock market. For example, the price of the stock market index called the Dow Index in the United States was determined by adding up the prices of 12 of the largest public companies and dividing that number by 12, averaging the prices. Today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average uses 30 of the largest and most 
influential companies in the United States to determine its stock index. Using much more complicated methods that call for the use of computers. What are the concepts of convergent and divergent sequences? Convergent and divergent sequences are based on the limit of a sequence. A convergent sequence, the one most commonly worked on in calculus, means that one mathematical sequence gets close to another and eventually approaches a limit. Convergence can also apply to curves, functions, or series. This is seen visually when a curve approaches the x or y axis but does not quite reach it. What is the scale of a map? Most travel, street, or highway maps show a measurement scale usually in terms of miles and kilometers. To determine a straight line, horizontal, distance on a map. Take a piece of paper and mark the origin and destination as tick marks on the paper. Then measure the distance between the tick marks based on the map scale to find the distance in miles or kilometers. Topological maps also have scales, but in this case the scale is a ratio representing the measure on a map to some number of the actual units of measure on the Earth's surface. For example, a map with a scale of 1 colon 25 comma 0 0 0 means that 1 inch on the map is equal to 25 0 0 0 inches on the ground. Because both numbers have the same units, it can also be interpreted as any unit measure. For example, the same map could also be interpreted as 1 cm equals 25,000 cm on the ground. Or 1 m equals 25,000 m, and so on. For those who prefer to measure in miles and kilometers. Most topographic maps also offer a graphic scale in the legend. For more about scales, see Math in Engineering. What does the strange symbol IFF mean in calculus? He symbol, or word, IFF actually is shorthand for if and only if. It is not only mathematics that depends on the IFF, but also philosophy, logic, and many technical fields. It is usually italicized, in addition. The phrase P is necessary and sufficient for Q is also seen as QIFFP. The corresponding logical symbols for if and only if are, and equals. But for those who study calculus, it is an area of mathematics pioneered by Gottfried Leibniz. His idea was based purely on the concept of infinitesimals. This was in opposition to the calculus of Isaac Newton, who based his calculus on the concept of the limit. Although historically the emphasis was placed on the minute. Modern infinitesimal calculus actually has little to do with infinitely small quantities.
Why is Greenwich, England, called the Prime Meridian? The reason for Greenwich, England, being the Prime Meridian is historical. An imaginary line passes through the old Royal Astronomical Observatory. Which was chosen by astronomers of the day as zero longitude. The observatory is now a public museum located at the eastern edge of London. It is a great spot for tourists. Who can find there a long strip of brass that stretches across the yard marking the prime meridian? Here it is possible to straddle the line with one foot in the Earth's Eastern Hemisphere and the other in the Western Hemisphere. What is a field? A field is an algebraic structure that shares the common rules for operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, except division by zero. Of the rational, real, and complex numbers, but not integers, see below under ring. A field must have two operations, must have at least two elements. And must be commutative, distributive, and associative, see above for definitions. Formerly called rational domain, a field in both French core and German corpor, appropriately means body. A field with a finite number of members is called a galois or finite field. Fields are useful to define such concepts as vectors and matrices. What is an exponent in terms of algebra? An exponent is actually raising a number to a certain power. This is written as a superscript to the right of a real number. Such as 34, expressed as 3 raised to the fourth power, or 3 with an exponent of 4. For more information on exponents, see Math Basics. The exponent represents the number of times a number is being multiplied. The above example, for instance, actually means 3x3x3x3, which is equal to 81. The power can be an integer. Negative or positive numbers, real number, or even a complex number. This can also be thought of as taking the quantity b, the base number, to the power of another quantity often called e, the exponent. In many computer oriented texts, this is written as b caret e. Exponents are important to algebra as they are often included in algebraic equations. The process of performing the operation of raising to a power is known as exponentiation. Exponents are also often associated with functions. For example, in the function f, x, equals x2, the 2 is the exponent. What is trigonometry? Trigonometry is the study of how the sides and angles of a triangle are related to each other. 
Interestingly, the angles are usually measured in terms of a circle around the X and Y axes, from there. Certain formulas are calculated, much as they are in algebra, to determine all the angles and units. Because trigonometry is such a mix of algebra and geometry. It is often considered the art of doing algebra over a circle. Although trig, as it is nicknamed, is a small part of geometry, it has numerous applications in fields such as astronomy. Surveying, maritime and aerial navigation, and engineering. What is a quantifier in predicate calculus? A sentence or many sentences containing a variable, such as x, can be made into true or false propositions simply by using a quantifier. The quantifier actually assigns a truth value to the sentence. Depending on the set of values allowed for that variable. There are two major quantifiers, the existential and universal quantifiers. Which are represented by the logical operator symbols of 3 and V, respectively. Although there are also more exotic types of logic that use different quantifiers. Who was Hipparchus? Hipparchus of Rhodes, also seen as Hipparchus of Nicaea, as he was born there, c. 190 c. 120 BCE, was one of the greatest Greek astronomers. A partial list of his discoveries includes, being the first to discover the precession of the equinoxes. Compiling an extensive star catalogue, assigning magnitudes as a measure of stellar brightness and calculating the length of the year to within 6.5 minutes of the correct value. His planetary models were mathematical, not mechanical. And although Hipparchus did not invent it, he was probably the first person to systematically use trigonometry. Which was a necessity for most of his discoveries. Who first introduced Arabic notation and the concept of zero to Europe? Italian mathematician Leonardo of Pisa, c. 1170 c. 1250, who was also known as Fibonacci, or son of Bonaxi, although some historians say there is no evidence that he or his contemporaries ever used that name. Brought the idea of Arabic notation and the concept of zero to Europe. His book Liberabasi, the book of the abacus. Not only introduced zero but also the arithmetic and algebra he had learned in Arab countries. Another book. Liber Quadraturum, the Book of the Square, was the first major European advance in number theory in a thousand years. He is also responsible for presenting the Fibonacci sequence. For more information about Fibonacci and the Fibonacci sequence, see Math Basics.
What are polar coordinates? Polar coordinates are actually an alternative system to the Cartesian coordinates. In two dimensions, they mark a point on a plane by its radial distance. R, from an origin and a polar angle, 8. This method also uses trigonometric functions such as sin and cos. Sine and cosine. For more about such functions, see trigonometry in this chapter. Polar coordinates in three-dimensional space also called. Spherical coordinates use R and two polar angles, 8. To give the direction from the origin to the point. To compare. A three-dimensional polar coordinate system overlaps the Cartesian system in several ways. For example, 8 is the angle between the line to the origin and the z-axis of the Cartesian, x, y, z, system. Is the angle, counterclockwise when viewed from positive z. Between the projection of that line onto the, x, y, plane and the x-axis. What are some life questions you can figure out using math? There are many questions you can explore about your own body and age with mathematics. For example, approximately how many Sunday nights can you expect to sleep until you are 100 years old? Just take 100 years, minus your current age. And multiply that result by 52, weeks in a year with a Sunday. For example, if you are 25, the answer would be, 125 x52 equals 3. 900 how many of those will be good night sleep is up to you. To calculate the number of times your heart has beaten since you were born. You need the help of a watch or clock. First, time your heart beats per minute, to find out how to count your pulse, see everyday math. Then multiply beats per minute x 60 minutes, in an hour, x 24 hours, in a day, x 365.25 days, in a year, x your age. For example, 72 heartbeats x 60 x 24 x 365.25 x a person who is 30 equals 1,136,073. Six hundred beats since the person was born. Of course, this is an approximation, since the heart usually beats slower at night. And it speeds up when you see the bill for your latest car repair. Figuring out how much air you breathe during a lifetime is another fun mathematical calculation. If you optimistically decide you want to eventually be 100 years old. And the average person inhales about 1 pint, or 0.47 liters, of air per breath, you can do the math. First take the number of breaths you take while at rest per minute, say about 21 per minute. X 0.47 liters x 60 minutes x 24 hours x 365.25 days x 100 years old equals 519,122,520 liters. Again, this is only an approximation.
How are some parts of an axiomatic system further defined? There are several terms that further define an axiomatic system. All of them are slightly intertwined, depending on the system. The absence of contradiction or the ability to prove a proposition. Statement, and its negative are both true is known as consistency. Independence is not necessary to an axiomatic system, but consistency is definitely necessary. The opposite of consistency in an axiomatic system is inconsistency. An axiomatic system is called independent if no other axioms can be derived or proved, from other axioms in the system, in other words. The entire axiomatic system will be termed independent if all of its underlying axioms are independent. The independence of a system is usually determined after the consistency. An axiomatic system that is dependent has some axioms that are redundant, this is also called redundancy. An axiomatic system is complete if no additional axiom can be added to the system without making the new system dependent or inconsistent. In other words, the aim is to prove or disprove any statement about the objects in the system from the axioms alone. In complete systems, Every true proposition about the defined and undefined terms can be proved from the axioms. Systems with the logic based on true or false propositions connected by and or and not are complete, as are those that include quantifiers. More complex systems, such as set theory, are not considered complete. What are scale drawings? Scale drawings are drawings or illustrations that are proportional in scale to the real structures they represent. In order for a new building to be designed, an architect must convert his or her ideas to drawings. But since the drawings can't be as large as the building, the architect uses scale drawings to depict the structure. These miniature versions of the actual structure show the sizes, shapes, and arrangements of rooms. Along with structural parts, windows, doors, closets, and other important details of construction. The scale drawings of these buildings must be in exact proportion to the actual structure. With various scales used for this purpose. For example, one eighth inch might be used to represent one foot, thus. An eight foot long building feature would be drawn as an inch long on paper. One of the most common scales used by architects is 1 fourth inch equals 1 foot. These measurements can also be translated into the metric scale. Scale drawings are also used in other engineering fields, such as surveying. For example, distances measured in the field can be translated to a smaller scale such as a drawing, in order to accurately depict what was measured. The ratio between the real distance and the drawn distance is called the drawing scale. If the measurement is 200 feet in the field and on paper the desired line is 8 inches long, 
then 8 inches on the paper would equal 200 feet on the ground, and 1 inch would be equal to 25 feet on the ground. This is translated as a diagram with a scale of 1 equals 25, 1 inch equals 25 feet. Or 125. There is another way of approaching such an illustration. If the longest distance measured in the field was 300 feet and the desired drawing scale is 1 inch equals 25 feet. Then the minimum length of paper needed would be 12 inches, or 300 slash 25. What is a graph? The term graph has several different meanings in mathematics. It can mean the interpretations of numbers, including bar graphs, pie charts, and line graphs. For example, a pie chart, graph, is often used to represent percents. Such as a breakdown of where a taxpayer's money is spent in the various government agencies for a certain year. In analytic geometry, a graph is simply a way of plotting thus, visually representing points, lines, curves, and solids in order to understand and interpret certain geometric figures and to solve equations. For example, solving an equation with one to two variables, usually written as x and y, or two dimensions, results in a curve on a graph, note, a line is considered a curve in geometry. Equations that contain three variables, usually as x, y, and z, or three dimensions, result in a surface. 